All right, good morning. This is our read aloud for third grade. Um, you have your uh, read aloud questions in your assignments, so you need to get that out um, so you can listen and follow along and answer the questions. Um, today, this is our new text set, which is connecting across generations, which is family. And the essential question is, what is special about being a family? So we will be answering those questions throughout the that week. Um, so I want everybody to listen so they can get your questions right. All right. Some families think the kitchen is the best room in the house. Why would that be? The title of this book is, is In My Mama's Kitchen by Jordine Jer Nolan. Where do you suppose this story will take place? I'm going to assume this story takes place in the kitchen just because of the headache, the, the title, and the illustration. Okay, what things does your family do in the kitchen? That's a question for you. Um, people often seem to end up in the kitchen. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people would end up in the kitchen? So let's find out what's happening in, the sto in this family's kitchen. First in line, seems like everything's good, everything good that happens in my house happens in my mama's kitchen. Like the day Nadine burst in waving a letter over her head. I got it, she yelled, I got it. What? I shouted. What did you get? Nadine held the letter over her heart and closed her eyes. She had read the whole thing without even looking at it. Dear Mrs. Jeffries, I am pleased to inform you that you have been accepted to our university on a four-year music scholarship. We did a dance about, around Nadine. Mama, Mama and Daddy hugged each other real tight. Then Nadine got out her clarinet and played Daddy's favorite song, This Little Light of Mine. Daddy sang a made-up song about Nadine being the first person in our family to go to college. This little daughter of mine, first in the family line. This little daughter of mine, she's made it to a college time. This little daughter of mine, first to be in line. Going to college, going to college, see her shine. I felt so proud, I stood on a chair and saluted her. All right, so the main characters. On the fourth page is her mom and her dad. The narrator, the little girl is the narrator and then her older sister. Okay? So those are the characters that are in the story. The wedding. My friend Naomi made all the plans. We held Emma's wedding in the sunniest part of the ki Mama's kitchen, right around under the window. We marched her down the aisle between Mama's African violets. Janie was supposed to be the groom, but she squirmed and meowed and wiggled out of her wedding dress clothes. Then she hid behind the stove. We had the reception anyway. Tea cakes and ice cold buttermilk. The groom came back when she saw the buttermilk. Taking pots. Talking pots. On the Saturday, Mama and her sisters do talking pots day. I stay, I stay close by. Aunt Katie, Aunt Glory, and Aunt Ludy always arrive together. Each one is carrying her biggest stewing pot in one arm and shopping bags in the other. The bags Aunt Ludie carries are full of vegetables. Aunt Gloria's bags are filled with meats and sausages and always have one odd-shaped package on the top. We all know what what's inside, the biggest soup bone in town. Aunt Katie's bags hold extra cutting boards, knives, vegetable peelers, bowls, and spoons. She pulls them out. Then she holds up Grand Lee's metal coffee pot. I'll make the coffee. In moments, every... Every hand is busy. Nadine and Mama are washing vegetables when Mama begins to hum a melody that has no words. Then Aunt Ludy joins her in deep, low tune, tones. Aunt Katie and Aunt Gloria chime in with high-pitched harmony. The air is full of hum humming. Their hands are flying. I think they cook like hummingbirds. Just as easy as the music started, it turns to talk. It's, it turns to talk. Remember the time you told me the insides of the human body smelled like fresh, fresh pineapple? Aunt Ludy asks as carrots peeling fly into her back. I got laughed right out of seventh grade science class that day. Remember how Mama always bragged about the way I chop onions, says Aunt Gloria as her knife cut chunks on the cutting board? Always mint so nice and fine and never a tear. She sighs, shaking her head. How about that time you made my Easter dress on the sewing machine, Nail? 
Aunt Katie, sending tomatoes, says to Mama, Not one of you had the heart to tell me the hem was four inches longer in back than it was in front. I couldn't figure out why Reverend Taylor looked at me so funny when he shook my head, shook my hand. All day, the kitchen is busy and full and cozy. Even the African violets are blooming, just like my aunt's. So blooming is an interesting word for describing people. Why do you think the narrator says her aunts are blooming? That's a question that needs to be answered in your reading discussion question or answer questions. Great Aunt Caroline. When Great Aunt Caroline came to visit her 95th birthday with us, Daddy was glad. I wasn't. Why do we always have to be so quiet about Great Aunt Caroline? I asked Mama. She's very old, Mama said. They, that didn't seem like a very good reason to me. Great Aunt Caroline wasn't used to cats, so Ka Janie had to sleep in the basement. Great Aunt Caroline wasn't used to children underfoot, so Naomi couldn't come over. And Great Aunt Caroline was always sat in my chair and called it her chair. She was still sitting there while I cleared the table one morning. Henry, her walking stick rested on her lap. I figured she was watching to make sure I did a good job. But by the time I had finished, her eyes were closed. She had sat completely still. It didn't look like she was even breathing. Had she died? I held my breath as I leaned over to look on her face. Suddenly, she opened one eye, just like Janie. Boo! She shouted, gotcha, I made you look. Ha 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 ha. So that was a surprise. What do you think will happen next between the narrator and Great Aunt Caroline? All right, you have to answer that question. Later, when we went for a walk, she called me her walking out to the backyard friend. Janie's apples. Every ab October, Mama makes cra crab pe apple, ugh, apple jelly. I wash the apples, Nadine peels them, Mama cooks them, and we all fill the jars. It gets pretty busy. So usually Janie hides behind the stove, usually, but not this time. This time she marched into the middle of the kitchen and jumped on top of a basket of apples. Mama shoot her, but she wouldn't get down. I put her on the floor, but she jumped right back up and rolled around. Shoot, Janie, I scold. She batted an apple, then another and another. I think she thought the apples were mice just as I reached down to pick up her up again. She batted one mouse, mouse too many. The basket fell over and the apples came crashing down around her. Apples rolled all over the floor. I tripped and fell on the top of Janie. Janie howled. Mama dropped a pot of water. Nadine screamed and grabbed for the mop. But by then, Janie was frantic. She ran around the kitchen, but she kept running into apple baskets. She knocked every single one over. Then she slid through the pile, puddle of water and crashed into the wall. Just then, we heard Daddy out the door, at the door. J.D. scrambled to her feet, let out, let out a wild meow, and flew outside right between his legs. He stared after her. Then he stared at the mess in the kitchen. Finally, he looked at the three of us. Cat got your, everyone's tongue, he asked. We all burst out laughing. So Daddy is using a common expression sometimes when a person is silent because they're surprised or they don't know what to say. Another person will ask, Cat got your tongue? Corn pudding time. Most of the time we say the kitchen it, say the kitchen is mama's, but when daddy makes corn pudding, it belongs just to him. At the first crackle of the falling leaves, he announces it's getting to be corn pudding time. As soon as the first frost covers the ground, he rubs his hands together and sniffs the air. Mmm, he says. I can almost smell the smell that corn pudding cooking up right now. By the time the pumpkins have all been come sagging, jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkin pies, Daddy has taken over the kitchen. Watching Daddy makes the corn pudding is a lot better than actually eating it. While he turns the handle of a mama's old fish-fashioned egg beater, he sings La Cucaracha and dances the cha cha cha. While he sifts and stirs, measures and mixes, pours and pinches, he sings and dances the tango right across the kitchen floor. Mmm, he says, as he slides the corn pudding into the oven. This is going to be the best one yet. Then he picks me up, and we twirl and swirl around the room. Corn pudding has never been a favorite dessert of mine, but when Daddy presents, presents it at the dinner table, wearing the smile that smile of his and humming, Glory, Hallelujah, having to eat it as, is worth it. So the narrator seems pretty happy to eat the corn pudding, even though she doesn't like it much. Why do you think she is saying she's, she says eating it is worth it? Why would she say that? Winter in the Grain Leaf. 
In winter, when I come home from school, I, the warm kitchen fogs the windows. I hug Mama from behind, and she says, Hello, sweet potato pie. How was school today? Then she drops a taste of peach cobbler into my mouth, and peach juice dribbles down my chin. Stand close to Grand Lee and warm the shivers off, she tells me. Then we talk about my day while she stirs a pot of greens until the frying chicken and mixes a bowl of cornbread butter. Chum, 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 chum. Mama's wooden spoon scraps against the bowl. But before she can put the cornbread into the oven, she jiggles and shakes the door handle. I don't think I'll remind Daddy that the handle is still broken, she says to me. I smile. Grand Lee was Mama Mama's, Mama's Mama's stove, and she doesn't want a new one. Neither do I. So she named the stove Grand Lee. Nighttime serenade. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I wake up. When the house is dark and quiet, I can count the ticks of the clock. 493. 494. I go into the kitchen for something to eat. Sometimes Daddy and Janie are already there. We sit and snack together or whatever we like. Sometimes we make sandwiches out of leftovers and have ice cream and cookies. We giggle and munch and try not to wake the others. We talk in whispers and make big gestures, but Daddy isn't all that good at being quiet. So what do you think will happen if Daddy makes too much noise? I don't know. We'll have to see. Clang, bang, a lid falls on the floor. Soon, Mama and Nadine are in the kitchen, too, and Dada, da, Daddy doesn't have to whisper anymore. Now that we are all here, how about a story, Daddy asks. Then he starts the way he always starts. When I was a little boy down on the farm, after the story comes songs, Daddy calls them serenades for sleepless nights. We sit around the table talking and singing and laughing, just like that's what that's what everybody does in the middle of the night. And we, when I finally start to yawn, I know for sure that everything's, everything good that happens in my house happens in my mama's kitchen. Okay? So what I need you to do is I need you to finish up your questions and then submit them.